Hello my dear friends, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Sarita, so glad you're joining me. Yikes, it is the end of August. Actually today is September 1st. I don't know where August went. There's part of me that wishes that we still had another couple weeks in August. Not because I like August, actually I detest it from a weather standpoint. And toward the end of any season, you kind of start getting that seasonal exhaustion and wanting it to be the next season. And that is particularly true in the home fragrance community when pretty much for the entire year, we are tilting toward fall, which is kind of the apex of what it is that we do for home fragrance. Um, <laughs> I noticed that Sean from Hearthside is missing in action. He has apparently deleted his channel, but I always think of Sean because Sean only likes the fall <laughs> and he will sometimes do the holiday season as well. But like, um, if it's up for him, it's like basically fall for about eight months out of the year. <laughs> and then, and then the holiday, you know, the winter holiday for about two months. And then the other months are just like, fuck all. Like it's just, yeah, it's, it's not a good situation. I'm not like that personally, and I do love the summer, and I actually have discovered that some of my absolute favorite candles are summer candles. So there's that, and I just am not ready for the fall yet. I'm not ready for it professionally, personally, or in terms of home fragrance. And I still have a stack of candles that have been burned through and are ready for reviews, and I haven't gotten to them. So for those reasons and no others, I would prefer to have another two weeks in August. However, here we are, and I have my tub of August candles that I have either burned or melted. I have not organized them in any way, shape, or form, so it's gonna be roughly a last in, first out kind of situation and very random, not necessarily organized by brand or anything else. So I apologize for that if, <laughs> if you need to have everything organized. Um, so here is a candle here from Bath and Body Works, Sea Salt and Sales. And I liked this candle, but I didn't love it. Oh, it does smell so good. <laughs> it smells so good on cold. Oh, it's such a great briny aquatic with maybe a little bit of balsam. It doesn't say balsam, but it kind of seems like balsam, even though it says driftwood here and a lot of musk. So it's kind of one of those aquatic slash masculine cologne conceptuals, but I would say very light on the cologne, which is very good. I mean, it's not, it's not in this, it's really not in the same category as like Ocean from Bath and Body Works, which is a very traditional heavy kind of men's cologne conceptual. This is much more of a fresh aquatic conceptual. Oh, it's so good. And I, if you watch the review, I don't understand why this isn't Surf Shop because Surf Shop literally has on the bottom of it, I think like pine and musk and bergamot, which is basically how I would describe this one, plus the really major aquatic briny element to it. This one is Ocean Sea Spray, Aloe Vera Nectar, and Driftwood. So bizarre, so bizarre. Surf Shop this year was very fruity in a nectarous kind of way, which is why these notes are a little bit better for Surf Shop, to be honest. Anyway, I love the way this one smells on cold. And if it had a strength and throw that was anywhere near where like Surf Shop was this year, I could really highly recommend it. Oh, man, when I smell stuff like this, I'm like, man, Bath and Body Works can do aquatic conceptuals and they've got to keep doing them because they can really do them well. Unfortunately, the strength and throw on that was just not good. I'm going to leave this one out because, well, you'll see. You'll see why. So I'm not going to recycle this one. I'm going to leave it out because we're going to have a nice little compare and contrast here in a week or so. All right. Yankee Candle, rainy day. Hey, it's another aquatic. I've been doing a lot of aquatics lately. In this, um, it's supposed to be a fall packaging. <laughs> and it kind of 
five is, and I kind of like it. I like the eucalyptus leaves, or maybe they're not eucalyptus, maybe they're just rose leaves, but they kind of look like eucalyptus. Um, and I like the sepia tone, I like the lid. It's actually kind of, especially for a Yankee Candle, a really nice design. I'm not sure that it was what everybody hoped, dreamed, and fantasized about for fall, but God bless. And Rainy Day is really not a fall fragrance either. Not that you can't burn it in the fall, it's just that there's so much else that is pressing in for our attention for fall that this is just kind of an odd one that they would be releasing it now. But this is an aquatic conceptual too. It is much more cologne-y though and perfumey, um, smelling it than like sea salt and sails. That said, once sea salt and sails from Bath and Body Works was burned, it started smelling a whole lot more cologne than how it smelled initially. Whereas this one, this one stays pretty true to how it smells on cold across the board. So yeah, it is perfumey, and I think it's a little bit more perfumey than a very similar candle to it, which is Rain from Village Candle. Very similar fragrances. This one is a little bit heavier with the perfume, but I still thought that it was a good candle, and um, yeah, I, I, I think it's good. I think it's especially good for Yankee Candle, and the strength and throw on it was, was very decent, very decent. I would repurchase that one again, it's not in my top tier, but yeah, that and the Village Rain Candle. And Sea Salt and Sales would be right in there too if it performed better. Has it performed better in other years or is it just not a good performer? All right, so we have a candle here that did not burn well. And I did not even bother with a review of it. This is a vintage candle that I got on Facebook Marketplace from White Barn. This is Spiced Coconut Milk. Looks like it was poured in 2017. Guys, does that sound right? I think that's right. Um, because I think we have, I still can't quite figure out how to read these things, but the number is 7150. <laughs> For a minute I was like, is it like the 50th day of January and then I'm like wait no month has 50 days I'm obviously not reading this right it is the 7 1 2017 I think and then 150 would be um who knows who knows it's impossible it's impossible to decipher it's a, it's a <laughs> it's an enigma <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys have told me about how to read these like a million times. <laughs> Is it just the 150th day of 2017? Is there no month and date? I don't know. Okay, so anyway, close parentheses on that. I think it is a 2017. This is back when these candles were $24.50 for a white barn. It doesn't smell very coconutty. Even on cold, there's the vaguest amount of spice. Kind of in the, almost like a cardamom or nutmeg or something. It's not even cinnamon really. And there is this, honestly, it smells a lot like wax. <laughs> like, like crayons and wax. And that could be, because I have no idea how this was stored. I just really don't. Um, so I'm not gonna fault the fragrance or fault um, Bath and Body Works for that. That said, I mean, it's kind of a creamy, vaguely roasty kind of fragrance. But I wouldn't say that it's coconutty or fresh or spicy. It's bizarre and it's very mild and just not, yeah. And, it, and once I burned it, and it burned very badly by the way, do you see all that? I mean, I would burn this thing for hours and I could not get it to pull all the way to the edges. Like it was craziness. And after like the third, fourth burn, 
of the exact same thing. I mean, you can see, do you see the white tips on the, on the wicks? I don't know if you can see those. Um, but that's also an indication that it's just not, it's not burning correctly. It was puny. It was, it was really a disaster, not in terms of sooting, but that may have just been because it was burning so low and it was having so much trouble that it like could get up to the soot level, if you know what I mean. Um, when I had it burned and I could smell it, it honestly smelled like buttered popcorn. I don't know why. There was just this very like roasted butter smell. And I don't know where the butter is coming from. It does have this very like kind of warm, almost salty, savory kind of aspect to it. I, I swear though, because I, I had it in the guest bathroom for most of its existence, trying to like let it have like its little tiny space where it could do something in it. And I was laying in the front, laying on my couch, and all of a sudden I just thought to myself, where is the buttered popcorn coming from? I could not figure out why I was smelling buttered popcorn. And I thought like, it must be some weird psychological thing. I need popcorn, I'm watching TV. And then I realized it was this candle. Ugh. I mean, I don't need a buttered popcorn candle. I like coconut and I like spices. And this candle was not giving me coconut or spices. Neither was it giving me strength and throw. Neither was it giving me a good burn. So it's a no for me. And I didn't even bother putting it in the crock. I don't know if this is a bad performance just from having sat or if it really burned that badly when it came out in ye old 2017, if you know what I mean. However, I bought this off of Facebook Marketplace from a lady who very obviously did not want me to sniff the candles before I bought them. Like just wanted me to like buy them cold, blind, and I should have insisted, but you know how awkward sometimes those Facebook marketplace exchanges can be? And you're just like, uh, they think I'm a murderer. They think I'm out to get them. They think I'm not gonna give them their money, you know? And you just like get cowed into buying things sometimes that you really kind of wanted to try out first. That's what happened with this. So I not only have this one, I have a second coconut spiced milk because I thought I would like it because it's a coconut candle and it's spiced and the notes on it are warm toasted coconut, fresh cream and ground nutmeg. There's the nutmeg. Ugh. Anyway, I have two of these and I don't want to burn the second one. So I'll tell you this, the first person down below who gives me um, a comment and says, I want the coconut spiced milk candle, it's yours. I'll ship it to you free of charge. Seriously, first person, first come, first serve, because I am not gonna mess around with that second candle. But it's yours if you want it. If you wanna mess around, God bless, it's totally fine with me. Um, Hemingway's Garden, this was a little tiny candle from a place, the Key West Candle Company in Key West, Florida. This was a terrible candle. Hand poured in Key West, Florida, I doubt that. I doubt that. What are they doing in Key West? Why would they be hand pouring anything in Key West? On the other hand, this smells so atrocious. Perhaps they are hand pouring them. Smells like it. Um, this was a gift from somebody. Um, I babysat their children and watch their house while they were in Key West for a week and knew I had candles and loved candles and had a candle channel and God bless. They prob probably was an expensive candle too because it's a racket. These people, looks like they charge $20 for this little eight ounce. Eight ounce? That's not eight ounces. Is that eight ounces? I don't, that's not eight ounces. What a racket. But you know, when you're a tourist, you're a tourist. So there you go. And God bless, they bought it for me. And it's supposed to be an orange blossom jasmine citrus candle. It um, smells like a really bad hand soap. Like it's just very soapy in a very cliched kind of way. I am getting some citrus notes. So it's kind of like one of those 
hand soaps that you would expect like 20 years ago to put in your kitchen because it's like lemon and it kind of smells like the way that Dove <laughs> dishwasher detergent used to smell. I think even Dove has stepped their game up. You know, Glade has stepped their game up. <laughs> Old Spice has stepped, everybody's stepping their game up. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't think this would make the cut anymore for Dove, but God bless. I tried with it, but it was all soy, I think. Yeah, it says soy wax here, and it kind of burned like it. It's got those craters and whatnot. Yikes. It didn't really have much of a strength and throw, but it was kind of a good thing. This was a crock candle. This is Tahitian Twist from Village Candle. I love this candle. I really do. I just haven't had that many of them that actually perform. So Tahitian Twist is one of the candles that they market for Marshalls and TJ Maxx, but it is a repackage of a candle that's been very long in their collection called, I think it's... Soleil, Soleil all day, Soleil all day. And it's got the awnings on it and the, the umbrellas, but it's the same color of wax and it's the same scent notes. And I had the two of them at one time and I'm pretty sure they're just, it's just a repackage of um, Soleil all day. I just love this candle. I love this fragrance. So this is Jasmine, Neroli and coconut milk. And this is much more of a orange blossom than a neroli. And to be honest, I'm smelling something that's almost freesia-like. And it may just be the combination of the particular tropical like fruits that they're using here up against jasmine and neroli. But because, because freesia is kind of a very fruity floral, to me it smells like a freesia and possibly a plumeria. And man, I'll go a long way for a freesia and a plumeria. Yeah. That said, upon it being burned, it went a little bit more jasmine and almost gardenia-like. So it got a little bit more heavy and a little bit more cliched in its white floralness. But this is one that on cold, it smells bright, it smells fresh, it smells fruity, and it smells white floral in more of an unexpected way. Like I said, more freesia and plumeria, unfortunately, upon it being burned, kind of goes a little bit more gardenia. And I didn't get good strength and throw um, when I attempted to burn it. However, melting it in the crock, I got a pretty good strength and throw out of it, at least for about three or four days. So I, I love this candle. I just think it needs a little bit of work in terms of its formulation, but hopefully it stays around for a long time. And how great is that color too? It's just so fantastic. Ah, oh, yes, that's a yes for me. Obviously they're kind of in that same genre of old school Yankee candle with the colored waxes. Man, when that is done well, it is done well. And I just hope that it endures. I can even, I can even do away with like, I know people don't like this old fashioned like apothecary look. Um, and Yankee Candle, God bless them, tried to update it with that modern tumbler look that is going away now, is being discontinued. I'm not wedded to this shape, but I do love the colored waxes with kind of the photorealistic label. And I know it's dated, but I still think it's fantastic and I still think there's a place for it. When everybody else is doing like the wraparounds, and I think that these are nice too. Let there still be some companies who really specialize in the colored waxes and those like little photo realistic labels in the front. I think it's fantastic. All right, so there's that. Here's another crock candle. This was from Kringle. This is Crimson and Clover, which was a reserve candle last year. Um, and I can't remember entirely the collection that it was in. I think it was supposed to be a botanical um, collection, if I remember correctly. No, I don't think it was. I think it was maybe a lot of different things, just random things. Crimson and Clover is really a fig scent. And I'm sorry I don't have the notes here. Um, it's really just fig. And I think it has some some floral, so it's kind of a floral greenness that they're associating with clover. It's a like a white floral 
green botanical um, with fig. And the fig note that they're using here is a little on the candied side for me personally. I mean, it's a true fig smell, but it's just, it's a little candied. And or they have also included some other sort of berry in there. It might even be a strawberry, to be honest. But it's, again, amplifying this sense of artificial sweetness that I think doesn't do it any justice. And so the entire fragrance, like, the best that this fragrance smelled is when it was more stripped down and smelled like an authentic green fig. Um, or, or fig on a green tree. Um, but... And there are some really excellent authentic fig candles out there in that genre. I know there's one from Anthropology Fig Tree. There's one from Nest um, Mediterranean Fig, I think. Um, there are some really good kind of stripped down fig candles in the same genre. For me, this doesn't best any of them. And it just wasn't, it wasn't firing right and often just came across with a generic fruity sweetness that I think was just not fresh or authentic. So I, given the price on it and given the fact that it had very little strength and throw, it's not one that I would suggest purchasing, but I don't even know if it's still available anymore and obviously was a limited edition. So God bless. I just finished that one up in the crock. I have a Homeworks candle here. This is Coastal Sands with this beautiful, oh, Harry Slacken knows how to do this like nobody else, which is photorealistic all the way around. That's what I'm talking about. Burn like a dream all the way down to the wick clips. Coastal Sands is a true Neroli candle. <laughs> um, mainly just Neroli with a little bit of creaminess um, that could almost be associated with a sandalwood. And it has an amber note in it as well. There's a refined quality to it. When I, um, I actually did a dual review of this one and where is my, oh, here it is. Perfect Summer from um, Bath and Body Works. It's because they're both actually similar scents and that they're both strong neroli candles as opposed to orange blossom they're neroli and um they kind of go into that solar sunscreen vibe of the two though this one was the most refined um this homeworks one was a little bit more sophisticated and balanced even though it has a very strong like sunscreen neroli note yeah yeah and the, the strength and throw wasn't bad, but it was erratic on this Homeworks candle. It was sometimes coming in at a three or a four, sometimes coming in at a 7.5. And frankly, you just didn't know. You didn't know what it was going to be today. I mean, I suppose that's kind of exciting and <laughs> unpredictable. But you know what I like better than that? Predictably strong. That would be great. Um, this Perfect Summer was very similar. Um, but, oh yeah, between us, I would buy this one over the Homeworks one. And yes, it is more synthetic. Yes, it has more of a, a mineral overtone that sends it deep into the sunscreen territory. And I think it actually, I think this is a repackage of a candle called Sun Tan from, I think Sun Tan from Bath and Body Works. Um, yeah. It's, it's very overtly sunscreenish, but there's still a freshness and there's still a brightness and there's still a floralness about it. Just enough, you know, to make it not quite under the sun territory. And while it's not as refined as the Homeworks candle, no question, there is an exuberance and a joy about this candle that I really appreciate. And that I think is, if you're gonna do a solar sunscreen floral, let it be exuberant, let it be joyful. You know what I mean? I don't, if I'm, if I'm turning to a sunscreen candle, it doesn't need to be sophisticated. <laughs> I'm already not in a sophisticated place. So why, why bother? <laughs> I think in making it 
it more sophisticated and refined, it actually took away the quality that is just most appropriate, not only for the seasonalness of this candle, but also the genre of it being kind of a neroli sunscreen kind of candle, right? Just let it be what it is, which is just, it's just joyful and bright and, it, and almost childlike in its exuberance. Yeah, I would, I would probably get the perfect summer over Coastal Sands. You could probably also get it cheaper at any point and it's a little bit more accessible and available than Homeworks is. That said, this label is really gorgeous. Um, the thing about Homeworks is that Harry Slatkin does so many, especially tropical candles, um, that are fantastic, like, like, like Tiare Sunrise, that are just brilliant. And he knows how to pair the floral with the fruit and get it to, it, it's just, it's, Harry Slatkin has a way with that, and particularly in the tropics. And so for me, Coastal Sands is fine, but it's not quite up to the standards of Harry Slatkin or, or what I can expect of him. For me, this is a little bit on the subdued and, I don't know, not brilliant side for Harry Slatkin. For Bath and Body Works, it's a different matter. They're different standards and different expectations. And I think that just across the board, if you're looking for kind of a sunscreen neroli candle, but that still has a good amount of like floral authenticity, I, I really like the Perfect Summer slash Suntan from Bath and Body Works. And I, I think it captures some of that August fun that I'm not sure that Coastal Sands quite has. Here is a candle from Kringle, which is crushed blueberry. Um, this one and there was another one. Oh yes, this one, Patanga Peach, yeah. So crushed blueberries is actually not a bad candle. Yes, it is a little on the blueberry Jolly, not Jolly Rancher, blueberry Pop-Tart side. And it's got a heavy amount of cream. And I was kind of hoping for a straight up blueberry candle with no cream and maybe a little bit more authenticity. Um, that said, it's not completely synthetic or candied. And I don't mind a little bit of that artificial blueberry smell. I'm one of those weird people. Every now, now and then I get a hankering for a blueberry Pop-Tart or a blueberry muffin that doesn't have real blueberries in it, that just has the fake ones in it. <laughs> I don't know, it's just every now and then, it's, it's just what I wanna taste. I can't explain why. Um, so in that sense, like, uh, it's an indulgence and I don't mind it. And it's not, like I said, it's not terrible. I think if Bath and Body Works did something like this, everybody would rejoice and think it was so fantastic. Unfortunately, the strength and throw on it was just, I could hardly smell it most of the time. I think it lived out its existence mostly in the guest bathroom, so I can't recommend it on that level. And I am very happy to say though that once it was burned, the, the lactonic, like the milk aspect of it did soften way down. And really it was just kind of that really juicy candied kind of blueberry smell, which was nice, um, but it was just firing at like a three or a four when it needed to be firing a lot more. Batanga Peach did perform a lot better in terms of strength and throw. I think I could get it in at least into the mid range pretty easily, five to 6.5, somewhere in there, which was a whole lot better than the blueberry one. It still wasn't like rocking my world. This um, Batanga Peach, has a very high acidic citrus note in it that to me smells a bit like pineapple, which is why I was saying it smells a bit more like peach and pineapple to me. That said, those two like fragrance notes are blended very nicely. And although I don't like pineapple candles very much, it works really well with this one. And it masks that kind of very musky note that can come across in authentic peaches that go a little bit like body odor a little bit. It cuts that with the bright high citrus um, acidity. Yeah. It was actually a really smart candle and performed a little bit better. That said, I don't know that I would buy it again. It wasn't one of those peach candles that just made me like, I don't know, 
yen. I, it just didn't. Um, all right, Fiji White Sands. To be honest, I've never really burned a Fiji White Sands before. I bought this last year or the year before that. It was like one of those mason jars that had this like really pretty like pearlized situation. I thought it was really pretty. And I've always privately thought that Fiji White Sands smells nice. Yeah, it's a little synthetic. <laughs> This is a candle that you swear you're smelling coconut, but I think maybe it's not. I think it's actually pineapple. I think it's pineapple and sandalwood, like a creaminess. I actually don't, are, are they listed? Sugarcane white nectarine sandalwood. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, you're right. It is kind of a nectarous element there. It just goes a little pineapple for me on the top. Not dissimilar to the candle I was just talking about, peach and pineapple. But this one is cut with a great deal of creaminess. Soft, like vanilla. It's a vanilla sandalwood. Vanilla sandalwood with the... So it's like a peaches and cream essentially, but it's got the, the sandalwood musk a little bit and then some brighter acidic notes with what to me smells a little pineapple-y. And it's just perfectly balanced, kind of from top to bottom. Yes, it is still kind of a little bit of a synthetic Bath & Body Works beach candle, but it's really very nice. It's very nice and it's brilliantly blended. So there's no, I'm not at all surprised as to why it's remained so popular year after year. I would buy it again, even though it is a little cliched, especially for those of us who have been with Bath and Body Works for some time. Um, this one was, I just finished it up. So this is Cherry Chai from Kringle. Um, it's one of the very first candles that I ever, well, re-bought from Kringle. So here's the thing. I tried Kringle probably about five or six years ago, something like that, um, when I discovered that Yankee Candle was uh, <laughs> having been bought out by Rubbermaid and was a disaster. And I didn't know what to do because I was a Yankee Candle girl. Like, I just, I, I wanted to continue burning candles, but at the same time, like, I refused to patronize Yankee Candle any longer and I needed something to fill the void. So I was doing a lot of internet research and everybody's like, oh, you know, the son of the founder of Yankee Candle has this candle company, Kringle, and it's very similar to Yankee Candle. So I bought a lot of things and I didn't like them at all. I didn't like, it wasn't even about the burns. It was about the fragrances. I just thought that I didn't like the fragrances at all. I didn't like their take on them. Um, and so I was like, yeah, I'm not doing Kringle. Then I tried them again about two years ago, two and a half, maybe three years ago. I tried them again. And this time, and this was like one of the first candles that I bought in that second retry. Um, and I made fun of it so hardcore. So if you look back, you can see it. This is one of the first reviews that I made on this channel. And I like panned this candle. <laughs> And I ended up kind of liking it. And spoiler alert, I just repurchased it. Can you believe it? That said, they are discontinuing it. So I just bought it the last time I did an order and it just came in actually. Actually, it's just sitting right here. It's sitting right here, here you go. This is the new one. <laughs> but I cut it for like five bucks. So they're discontinuing it and it was on a very steep discount. And I thought, oh heck, five bucks, right? It's a very strong cherry note. It goes a little candied. I don't know if it goes medicinal, but it kind of walks up to that line and stares it down for a second. And it's got a lot of cream. And it's, as with the crushed blueberries, it's that milky note that goes a little sour. No spices to speak of. So when I reviewed it, I panned it because I'm like, what kind of chai are they talking about? <laughs> First of all, cherry is not traditional to chai. Second of all, chai has various different associated spices and this has none of them in it at all, which made me think that maybe they were just using chai 
because they like the alliteration of like the cha, the cherry and the chai, yeah? And the cherry cha-cha-cha. Cherry cha-cha-cha would have, cherry cha-cha would have actually been a better, a better name for this candle. But I'll tell you what, now that we're into, everybody seems to be into this Tom Ford Lost Cherry era, this candle is actually perfect. So I picked up from Veluspa, I, they have a new cherry candle, what is it called? It's not Lost Cherry, it's like Cherry Gloss, I think, or something like that. Um, yeah, everybody has like a, all of the, you know, the perfume sprays at Target and all the dupes. Everybody has a dupe of Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. Every can cherry candle now within the last like year, year and a half that has come out, it's like a, a requisite compare and contrast to Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. Like you have to mention it, right? And so I just kind of feel a certain kind of way because actually, although the association hasn't been made, one of the best candles, cherry candles in this genre is Cherry Chai from Kringle. And it's not getting any love because it just, it came out at the wrong time, you know? But if this had come out now, everybody would have been swooning over it because it so reminds me of Tom Ford's Lost Cherry in this sense and that sense. So. Here's your public service announcement. I'm sure it's still on the website for $5 or whatever else it is. Um, if you want another Tom Ford Lost Cherry kind of candle, get yourself a cherry chai before they're gone from the Kringle candle. It's not a great candle, but it's not a bad one. And strangely, I found that kind of comforting. Every now and then, especially because I prefer very deep masculine kind of smells, Every now and then a candle like this is just really comforting to me because it's like a palate cleanser. It's a fruity pop of a ca um, candle of a palate cleanser for me. For a lot of other people, your palate cleanser may be completely different. It's just something that kind of resets your palate from like a completely unbroken diet of one particular fragrance note or whatever else it is, right? Um, and for me, like a really nice, sweet, fruity candle is a palate cleanser for me. It just is. And this one was, and when I saw it for $5, I was like, I'll do it. So anyway, I, I had some of the candle left because as one of my missions right now is to clear through my storage and find all of those half-used Kringle candles and either crock them or burn them. And this one burned so nicely that I was like, you know what? And if I recalled correctly, the strength and throw on it wasn't bad. And I thought, I can burn this one. I don't need to crock it. So I did. I did. The strength and throw on this is modest, but I would say that it's definitely in the six realm, if not higher, depending upon when and how long you're burning it. So there's that. Here's another Kringle one. This was a crock, herbs and spice. Um, and this one is a very dry spice. I kind of like it, to be honest. It has a very molten brown kind of aspect to it which is to say kind of a deep masculine herbal with some cologne overtones. And it's got some amber. To me, it's spicy in kind of a clove or incense way, but then it also has some unexpected herbs in it, like maybe a rosemary and a little bit of citrus to brighten a little bit. I actually really like it, but for me, the strength and throw on it was abysmal. I mean, it was abysmal when it was burned. Um, this is how far I could get burning it. This was why it was in the closet. And I crocked it, I crocked it. And to be honest, I could hardly smell anything just crocking it for days and days at a time. So I just can't recommend it. I really like the fragrance and I think it's actually a good start of a larger fragrance, has a little bit of an unfinished um, aspect about it. 
and the strength and throw is nowhere near where it needs to be. And for it to be a reserve candle on top of it, yeah, that was a no and it continues to be a no for me. Here was a Veluspa. I'm also getting through all of my tiny Veluspa candles, which have no strength and throw, but are really only good at just being able to smell them cold and think to yourself, would I like a larger candle with three wicks, right? Um, this is Blonde Tabac, and it's supposed to be Tabac, Vanilla Husk, and Sandalwood. It's a very soapy candle. <laughs> As that Hemingway's Garden, it was just a very dated, old-fashioned soap smell. Oh, it was a no. It was an absolute no. I think it was a limited edition, but it comes back fairly you like frequently, I would not recommend Blonde Tabac and I would certainly not get it in any kind of a larger vessel. Here is another Croc candle and it's another um, Kringle and it is Somerset and the wax has gotten very, very discolored on this one. This was a paraffin. Um, Somerset is one of my favorite fragrances. Oh, I can still smell it. Oh, so good. So this is actually in some ways kind of in the category of Fiji White Sands, but just not as tropical in that it's a very creamy, musky kind of sandalwood vanilla base in which they've put a lot of fruits um, and a lot of floral. And it also has some bright like bergamot on top. So it's a little bit of a perfume conceptual and it's a versatile one. It's also in the same category as a loom Paloma Petal, which I think is grapefruit, magnolia, and sandalwood or something like that, very similar. And then weirdly enough, um, Salted Amber and Vetiver from Bath and Body Works burns very similarly to this one too. It's a little bit more bergamot heavy, a little bit more sparkling and bright, but it also has kind of that white floral, beachy bergamot on top, sandalwood and cream on the bottom, that kind of a thing. I loved this candle, I do love it. Um, and <laughs> spoiler alert, because I will be talking about this haul, but I went ahead and went with so they had an amazing medium um, sale, which may still be going on right now for Labor Day, so please check it out. Um, and I got a lot of mediums. These are all 100% soy, so I'm concerned. And it does smell not as bassy as, um, I mean, even having burned this one, melted it for so long in the crock, etc. it's still stronger than this 100% soy is. It's not a good sign. Um, it's deeper, it's basier, it's richer, it's everything. Whereas this one, unfortunately, is sitting up pretty high and is a lot fruitier than creamy or sandalwoody, which makes sense because the soy doesn't capture the lower registers quite as well. So I'm concerned. I'm concerned. And to me, this smells a bit more generic white floral than whatever the mysterious je ne sais quoi element is here of this 100% paraffin. They're similar candles, but frankly, they smell almost like different candles. Yikes. Yikes. All right, I'll keep this one out too and not recycle it so that I can revisit this when I do the haul. I do love the color, although it looks almost a little bit artificial because the soy is just so, like it doesn't, it doesn't have the color, it doesn't have the color variations that like a paraffin does. And it, it looks a little like child's Play-Doh or something like that. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm concerned, but like I said, it was a sale and I am so glad that there's trying to keep it in the collection. I'm just concerned that it's not gonna survive the soy reformulation, but I at least wanted to try it. So that's Somerset. I might have another Somerset in paraffin. If I don't, I'm gonna be looking on eBay because I'm concerned. Oh, by the way, public service announcement. If you've got a Kringle Sanctuary candle. This is your moment to bring it out. Oh, I love Sanctuary for early September. So great. I have like five of those in paraffin. 
because I don't think, again, it's one of those ones, I just don't think it's gonna survive the soy transition. And that candle was lightning in a bottle. If you know, you know, sanctuary. Also one that I thought was um, not quite as brilliant, but very close and in the same category, hallowed ground, um, which was a Halloween candle like last year, I think. Oh, very much in the same genre as sanctuary and can be burned in early September. It's got a honeyed quality to it. Hallowed ground is fantastic. I've said this a million times, nobody's listening to me, but I really think they need to reissue Sanctuary in this country line and Hallowed Ground. So get rid of the spookiness. You can keep calling it Hallowed Ground. It's got this amazing honeyed amber kind of quality to it. You could do Hallowed Ground and it could be just like a picture of fields of like grain ready to be harvested or something like that, you know? Oh, both those are sister fragrances and they're perfect for early fall wow i mean those are just knockouts and i it really it makes me feel a certain kind of way because i know that i'm negative toward kringle sometimes when i don't like what i'm seeing or smelling but then there are certain things that they have done so well and it just seems like they don't care about them or they're not they're not capitalizing on them and I don't understand it. Those conceptuals, conceptuals are brilliant and traditionally they are fantastic at especially the more masculine conceptuals that they do. And Sanctuary is an, a prime example of that. It flew off the shelves. It was fantastic. And I just, I just don't. And, and and on top of it, if one of the reasons it's not coming back is because they, they can't reformulate it in soy and make it be the same fragrance and make it perform similarly. I'm worried about Somerset in that regard. It's just, what is the point? What is the point of making everything 100% soy if the best part of what it is that you do can't be translated into it? Also, why all the mediocre gourmands when traditionally Kringle has always been so good at the complex conceptuals, especially the masculine leaning ones? Okay, we're gonna let that go because I just feel as though I can go into a tailspin and I start, yeah. Start circling the drain and getting very doom and gloom and we're just not gonna go there we're not gonna go there here's another little Velispa one that I had this is French Cade Lavender French Cade Lavender is one of their biggest sellers for Velispa so Velispa's best sellers traditionally have always been French Cade Lavender I think that's their number one actually number two is Baltic Amber Number three is Mosu Bamboo. Bamboo. Those three have always traditionally been their best sellers. Um, French Cade Lavender I had never tried because it always seemed a bit weak for me and you know Velispa's weak across the board so what's the point, right? I burned this one though in my little guest bathroom and yes, it was very hard to pick up on it but when I smelled it close, it is an extraordinary little fragrance. It really is. It's a little bit aromatherapy, a little bit fresh, a little bit sweet, a little bit floral, a little bit herbal. It's just, it's a little of a lot of things. It's a beautiful conceptual and it fully deserves to be their best seller. It's just, of course, firing on a like level of two on a scale from one to 10, you know what I mean? So if I got it again, and I will get it again, there's no question, I'm gonna try to get it in that three wick shallow tin and see what kind of volume I can get out of it. I suspect even in a three wick tin, you're gonna need a small space for it, but I'll do it, I'll do it. That is a beautiful conceptual fragrance, gorgeous. I like it better than Baltic Amber. And I'm a Baltic Amber kind of girl. You know what I mean? That is fantastic. Um, all right, then I had this little baby right here. This is Art in the Park from Yankee Candle. Here I have the little, here's Art in the Park. So Art in the Park, oops, it's upside down. Art in the Park um, was a new candle, I think last year in their like little trash can clip art jars. 
we're just gonna call it that here on this channel, the trash can clip art jars, okay? Um, but what also came out in the signature that is being discontinued. Um, I like the smell of this one when it came out and I continue to like the smell of it and I almost bought it. I was at, <laughs> I was actually at Connor's, Connor from Connor Loves Candles. I was at Connor's Yankee Candle, but he wasn't there. So I was talking to like all of his store associates about all kinds of different things. And like, <laughs> I brought up to the register an art in the park. It was one of the medium tumbler ones. And I was like, I want this one. And it was like on clearance. And they gave me so much shade, so much side eye. They were like, you don't want that candle. That candle smells disgusting. It smells like wax. It's not a good candle. And I was like, really? <laughs> I felt so judged. <laughs> And they like knew I had a candle channel and was friends with Connor. And like, I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm like, <laughs> I'm losing all credibility as a candle expert <laughs> by liking this candle. And you know, like sometimes we do just have kind of like guilty pleasures with candles, just like we do TV or something like that. You know, I would be embarrassed to admit that I like this candle objectively, I know it's a subpar candle. I just like it. And that's totally fine. But this wasn't in that category. This was like, I legit kind of like this candle. It's very sweet and it's very high and it's very fruity and floral, but I like it. I think it's really nice. It's kind of in the sweet pea genre. Yeah, I think it's blended pretty well. And when I burned it in the bathroom, I thought the same thing. And it actually <laughs> decent strength for like how tiny, tiny he is. So I regret not having stuck to my guns and gotten the larger one on that. And if I saw a larger one, especially in my perfect medium size, I would absolutely get it again and obviously burn it for spring. So I don't know if that ruins my credibility for you, God bless, but I kind of like it. All right, then I have, this is it. I have some, um, some, you know, warming things. So these, these green ones, these green ones were from Aldi. These are the Gardenia Basil, which I've talked about. I bought hordes of these, like when it, I, this is from like three years ago. I bought hordes of them because on cold, they had this amazing um, Gardenia and basil smell to them. I mean, it had a legit green basil note or maybe it wasn't a basil note, but it was like at least a green note, like a green vine note or something. I loved it. Unfortunately, upon melting it, it got a little brassy, a little white floral brassy and heavy in the way that white florals do go. And that like fragile, authentic botanical green element kind of sunk into it. So frankly, I just burned them. I melted them all and I'm like, I don't need to hang on to this for posterity because I, it unfortunately is not quite as good upon it being melted. And then very last, no, second to last, we have this one, which is Coconut Breeze from Village Candle. And this is a repackage of, I think, coconut and vanilla. Coconut Vanilla is a fantastic candle that I've actually not burned yet, although I have one that I just bought. Um, but I'm pretty sure that Coconut Breeze was just kind of a limited edition repackage of it that um, found its way. I actually bought this off of the Village Candle website. Very similar to how this Tahitian Twist is really a repackage of Soleil All Day. The long-standing fragrance here is Soleil All Day and this is just kind of a, oh, let's try a different name for it for people in the grocery store. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> And coconut breeze the same way. It is one of the best coconut candles, coconut fragrances I've ever smelled. But I lean musky. I lean very, and there is a heavy musk component to this. Lots of musk, lots of coconut, lots of vanilla. It's a little roasty, it's a little deep, and I love every aspect of it. Ooh, it's so good, it's so good. So I'm glad I have the candle on that. And then last but not least, I think this is the coconut one. This one right here, and I have another one back there, is 
Um, it is sea salt and balsam from Bath and Body Works. Very in the same genre as sea salt and sails and rainy day. Sea salt and balsam is a great little candle. Do you remember that? Why didn't that come back? Sea salt, probably because they had surf shop and sea salt and sails this summer. So it would have been, it would have been redundant to have had sea salt and balsam as well. Sea salt and balsam is great though. And it stays briny and sprucey and kind of outdoorsy once it's burned too. Anyway, I had one and it was halfway done and then I dropped it and it cracked. So then I just had the candle part of it. So I carved it up and now I'm putting it in my warmer. So I have another one back there too. And I think I still have a few more pieces left. Yeah, I like that. I like that candle a lot. I'm doing a lot of these like briny ocean spruce candles lately and they've been great here at the end of August. It's been fantastic. I mean, you could do them at any time, but they're really kind of hitting the spot here late August, going into the fall period with other tree notes, etc. So that's what we've got. That's August. It's actually not bad, given. And I still have one, two, three, four, five, six other candles that I need to, that should have been reviewed this month and were not. So I'll push them into September, but I feel badly about that because at least a couple of them are true summer candles. And then I've burned one, two, three coffee candles so far. And I'm burning one as we speak. And there's another one in the back. Yeah, I'm on the coffee. We are on, we've got a coffee binge right now so that we can do coffee week in September. So I actually do have a lot of other stuff. So look for those reviews this week. Um, I will try to do, I'll try to do another one tomorrow for Labor Day. Um, the Yankees maybe, yeah, we'll do a couple of Yankees tomorrow. And then, um, and then we'll do Kringle Hall. I got a couple Halloween candles and I got some of the country mediums. So we'll do that haul. Um, and I still have that Bath and Body Works vintage haul and then some other candles. Yeah, I've got a lot. I've got a lot. I feel overwhelmed. <laughs> but August is done. So there you go. Thanks for joining me this month. Brace yourself, gird your loins as we are entering the fall season. But for me personally, because of these summer candles that still are going to kind of have to be reviewed in September, we're, it's going to be a soft transition over into fall. And as I've said, ad nauseum, we are still up in the 80s and 90s, at least in my neck of the woods. And I think in a lot of people's woods areas in the United States. So it's still pretty summer weather. The pools are still open. You know what I mean? So we'll, we'll do a, we'll do a soft a soft fall transition this month, but it may take me until kind of mid-September to start like truly transitioning into the apple category, if you know what I mean. Um, at any rate, thank you so much for joining me and I'll catch you in the next one probably tomorrow. Thanks guys, bye.